Good morning, crafty friends. Happy Saturday. I'm Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and welcome to my craft room. So this morning, we're going to have a quick live. It's going to be a little different than uh, we normally do. Uh, normally, I give you lots of choices and options for different things we're doing, but today, um, well, we're hosting a grad party. So um, I am going to show you a way to uh, use up your designer series paper. I love this technique. I, I don't know if it has a name, um, but I'm going to show you uh, a fun thing to do with your designer series paper. Now this month, Stampin' Up's designer series paper, a select uh, bit, which is quite a bit of it, 13 packages of it, are on sale for 15% off. So um, if you're like me and you like to collect, we're not hoarding, we're collecting designer series paper um, or patterned paper, then uh, you will love this technique. So uh, let's see, I'm just gonna adjust here for a minute. Good morning, Jenny. So this is what we're going to be doing. Um, I do have a couple extra cards I don't know if we'll have time to make those this morning, but we're definitely going to do these four. And this is, um, I used the Country Inn, Countryside Inn, whatever that new paperback is called. Someone help me out. I know someone knows the correct name. Um, I love this paper. And I picked four patterns and I cut it into four pieces. And then we kind of patch it back together um, or piece it back together. And then uh, when you cut a strip of designer series paper that's 12 by 12. Sometimes you have, um, I had a two inch piece left. So I decided to make a pattern and make two extra cards. So we'll see if we have time for that today. But right now I'm gonna show you how I did this pattern and how I cut it. And hopefully I remember all my measurements. Let's see, where's my ruler? Sometimes I do things on the fly and I forget to write it down. So, Okay, so earlier in the week, I gave you a this or that, and you had to choose. And Zoo Crew won slim, slim winning, but still, it's such a cute paper. So I picked Lemon Lime Green, or Lemon Lime Green, Lemon Lime Twist, uh, and Bull Party. It's a green. So um, I'm going to use black mats. So I have four of those. Um, these are the standard card base, eight and a half by five and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter on the long side. Um, the mat is five and a quarter by four. I'm using black and I'm using this paper. I love it. It just has black and white and pops of color. So I chose um, a black and white, a character, some characters, another black and white, and some more characters with some pops of the these two colors. Um, now, let me show you. So there are some white um, designs in here. Uh, these are the ones that I, the backs of the ones I chose. But if you would prefer, um, I love this paper. This uh, pattern could go well since we're matting it on black. And this one. So um, you could always uh, switch it up, change it up a little bit uh, since we're matting it on black. But I'm going to go for the darker, um, for the darker ones. Originally, I was going to choose a different color for the mats. So this could work um, if you wanted to lighten it up a bit. I'm going to keep it as is, though. Um, now, this, when we put it back together, um, I'll put that away later that out of here. Okay. So I, I cut these two pieces to go with these bits that were left over. So when I cut my whole strip of designer series paper, this is cut to three and three quarters by five. That's my typical matting five and a quarter by four, um, five by three and three quarters. So this is the second cut of five by three and three quarters. And then you have these little pieces left. And so you can create these 
by cutting one inch strips. So then they're one inch by three and three quarters. And um, then you can mat them. I think I, I must have made this a little bit longer. Um, that's okay. So you can uh, do a couple extra cards with those bits. Don't throw them away. If you don't want to make a card with them, you could also use them to decorate the inside of your card. So I'm going to lay those to the side. I've got some die cuts here. Um, good morning, Deb. And we're going to get straight to it. So um, let's see. Who has my timer going? Jenny, you got my timer going? This may be the fastest live I've ever done. We'll see. So I have my four pieces. Again, you can pick any pattern if you like the crafting uh, hobby pattern side. Um, I just happen to love this little fox. I really tried to get the alligator in there, but they're too far apart. So it would be in the next section of cards. I got, uh, yeah, I got them in this one. So what we're going to do now on this card, let me pull it up here for reference. Um, I used four p um, four pieces. So if you use three pieces, you're going to make three cuts because you're, you're swapping the patterns. I used four patterns. So I'm going to cut so that I have four pieces. So I'm going to cut um, here and then I'm going to cut these in half. Um, I cut these two so that they would be squares. Um, it's a, just a little bit easier to place these. Uh, so let's see what size I did two. It looks like two and a quarter. By one and a half, maybe. Let's see. It's three and three quarters. So if I did. I think I did two and a quarter and that should leave one. Oh my gosh. One and a half. There we go. So two and a quarter. And then this side would be one and a half. So I did this square is one and a half by one and a half. And this one down here would be two and a quarter by two and a quarter. But let's see how this lines up because I'm trying to use the characters in a, in a specific way. So adjust it how you need to. So what I do to cut, there's all my bits and pieces. Sorry, um, we have lots of guests <laughs> this morning. Okay, so I'm gonna line these up, okay? And I have them alternating, and you're gonna see why in a minute. I'm gonna show you what I've done. I have a light background and a dark background. So I'm gonna line them up, but I wanna check something first. So if I cut this at two and a quarter, two and a quarter, that's what I said, right? It's gonna cut right here. I guess you can still see my fox pretty much. And then I wanna check this one because I like these little characters. So again, I'm gonna line it up at two and a quarter. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. Now I'm gonna stack all four of these together. I'm using four patterns they're all, all the pieces are cut to five inches by three and three quarter. And I'm going to stack them all up so that when I cut them, they're all the same. And hopefully I cut, I, I did a decent job of cutting them at the right size earlier. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to slide all the way over to two and a quarter inches. Everyone hold your breath. Like I said, you can adjust these. So if you wanted it to go over more, you could make it two and a half by one or whatever works. You can adjust it. These are just the measurements I liked. Two and a quarter. Good morning, Vicki. You had to go to Jenny's page to find me. Are you not finding me when you just come to my business page? Okay. 
Okay, so I have them all stacked up. And yep, I'm cutting all four at the same time. And I'm just going to go back and forth a couple times to make sure that it cut all the way through. Now, I'm going to take this bit. And I hope my piggy survives. I think he's going to get chopped a little bit. That's okay. Let's see. Now, we don't have to do it square. So I did... On this original, I did this piece, so I did two and a quarter, so I went up two and a quarter. I'm going to cut from the bottom. Let's see where that lands. Because I don't want to cut my little fox's head off. So I'm going to adjust this measurement. I'll probably be cutting my pig in half, but that's okay. Let's see. Let's do it from the top. So don't, don't, uh, you can change these measurements any way that you like. Um, so the original, I did two and a quarter from the bottom. Um, this way, I'm going to try it the other way. Let's see what two and a quarter looks like. I know my fox will be okay. Let me check this one. Mm, it cuts my pig in a half, doesn't it? Let's just do this. I'm just gonna wing it, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you how how much I cut off. I think that'll work. So. I'm just going to eyeball it because I, I, I want it to look a certain way. So this is one. I'm going from the top of the pattern, and I'm going to cut it at one and three-fourths. It's not a square. They're going to be all rectangles, and it's going to be okay. So I'm just going back and forth until I get cut all the way through the paper. So... It works out. It's okay. All right. So I cut this at two and a quarter, and then I eyeballed this and cut it at one and a fourth. So let's see how we want this to look. This face got cut off a little bit. That's okay. That's all right. I really want this little skunk, though. So I'm going to go from the bottom here, and this is one... Can I say one and a half? Yeah, one and a half. So let's see what one and a half looks like. I'm going to probably adjust it too. So when you're using a pattern that it doesn't matter, then um, you can adjust it however. I'm going to, let's do on this one. I'm gonna do it at two and a half. Good morning, Joan. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do two and a half here. And I want to make sure it's all lined up. So remember, this is five inches. So two and a half is in half. Okay, so there's all my cuts. Remember, you don't have to follow exact. Basically, we're paper piecing these pieces back together on our mats. Good morning, Linda. No worries. This is going to be a quick live. Uh, and Vicki, I'm not sure why you're not finding me on my page. That's so weird that you would come to my page and I'm not there. 
live. That's where I find the video because um, when I view the comments, I have to view as my other profile. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mats. And remember, they're five and a quarter inches by four. And I'm going to lay them out, okay? And then I'm going to start with a pile here. And I'm just going to lay out these. Like this. Now, um, when I mix and match and shuffle my papers here, this is what I, I like to do. Um, I put the opposites, so these are light backgrounds. I put those so they're in opposite corners. And then I, I do the same with the dark ones. So this is gonna go down here. This pattern's gonna go down here. Oh, that's funny. Those two ended up together. <laughs> That's all right. And then this one goes here. So I'm just mix and matching <clears throat> the patterns. Oops, wrong one. And I like to do um, a similar background. So this one, these were both light. They had white and these both had a blue. Not the exact same blue, but you can tell these two are darker and these two are lighter. That's my preference. Um, you don't have to do it that way. Again, if you only did three patterns, you would have three sheets and you would cut it so that you have three pieces. So you could do a diagonal or a line and then a diagonal or however you want to do it. So adjust to what you have. I thought about only doing three on this one just because its characters and I wanted to try to show more of the characters but I decided to do four in the end so I lay them out like this then we're gonna have we're gonna have two that are pool party and two that are this lemon lime twist I just love these fun color combos so now um, I'm gonna glue all of these together then I have some die cuts here. Um, I even have this one that I stamped crooked the other day. It would probably work. So I just grab um, die cuts out and I'm just gonna add a greet, stamp and greeting and add it to the middle. You can use whatever you have. Good morning, Dad. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to just start gluing these and I'm going to, I, these pieces are gonna touch. You can separate them a little bit if you want. It's completely up to you. On this card, I had my patterns touching, like kind of like they're a quilt. They're pieced back together. So um, if you don't have them touching, uh, you could leave a little bit of black space in between. Completely up to you. So this is touching. I don't know if you can see the difference. And I have to admit, I had a hard time lining them up for whatever reason the day I did, did these cards. Um, so we'll see how I do today. Maybe it's because normally when I do this pattern, I like to leave a little space. And this time I tried it with them touching. Mine might end up with a little space. That's okay. It's whatever you prefer. This is just a great layout and you can mix and match your paper and you could even mix and match papers that didn't necessarily come together. As long as they're the same colors or they're the colors you want to use. Yeah, that is true, Vicki. I, 
I'm not always going for perfect. It's handmade. <laughs> I'm going for done sometimes. So that's how your layer looks. I did end up leaving a little space between mine. Um, again, do what you prefer. And somehow I've got glue all over me. Okay, there's one. What do you think? Do you like the, the bl bold black? Or I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but I just felt like it framed it well since I want a nice, bright base. I like these, um, this paper, it's black and white. And it's just so, the colors just pop. I don't typically like animal things. I just, um, sometimes they're cutesy, but. Oh, me too, Joan, I love it. I just think this is a great way to really showcase some designer series papers. And you could even, um, layer these so that there's a pop of color behind them. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple today. Now you don't need as much uh, glue if you're using liquid when you have designer series paper. It's thinner than our cardstock, so just be careful not to um, put too much on there. So who has this designer series paper and loves it because I think it's super cute? Or are you gonna go buy it now since it's on sale? <laughs> yes, Jenny, you do have some of it. And you could do this technique with it. Oh, oh, Joan, you're going to like the online exclusive that's coming. There's a Christmas online exclusive items coming. It releases to customers July 6th. And there is a gorgeous paper. I didn't get the paper yet. I think, Jenny, did you get it? I didn't get the paper yet, but I've seen it from some other demonstrators. And oh, my word, is it gorgeous. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Okay, so there's my four pieces. 
and now I gotta stamp something on these. Um, and of course, I didn't grab any, any greetings. Okay, let's do our card bases really quick. Now for the inside, I'm just gonna put a white piece. Um, like I said, those strips of um, patterned paper that you have left, um, you could um, cut it into one inch strips and put it on the bottom of your inside white piece don't have to make a card with it. <laughs> I feel you, Deb. I'm not really, um, I'm not really either. Um, that's why I didn't pre-order. Demonstrators can pre-order that paper right now and I didn't. Um, I'm just not ready. That's what I did with the other ones, Vicki. I just made, oops, my card base is not straight here. Try to. I didn't fold my card base straight. Hmm. Oh well, let's fix it. Jenny, you are always on top of it. <laughs> I'm always waiting till the last minute and then I've got to make everyone else's that orders for me first. And then I'm behind on my own. Not sure why that was so far off, but it's okay. Yes, Vicki, I did that with the with the other. Um, I, I used those strips and I cut them down and I matted them and I made, um, actually you will have more than six cards because the strip actually gets, um, eight pieces. If you do four, four patterns, you get eight pieces that are five by three and three quarters, and then you get those strips left. So you would actually get a ton of cards. You can make a ton, a whole set like this. And that's what I did with those. So here's my strip cards that I made from the other one. And then I just used a mat. Now I separated these, so I must've made my mat bigger. Um, when I first did them. Who knows? Sometimes my measurements are on the fly. I don't remember why I do things. That's why I take notes. Just make sure I'm gluing them the right way up. Okay, so there's my four cards. Now remember, I have this stash over here of basic white, and I have pieces that are cut to five inches by three and three quarters, and that's what I'm gonna add to the inside here. But first, before I do that, and I may not do that live, I might do that when I'm done. Um, I am going to stamp some greetings. So I had this one laying over here. I could put this like this. Or like this. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I'm gonna use that one. That was the one that we thought looked crooked. If 
from the other day. Guess what? I think it looks perfect on this card. And I stamped it in basic gray so it works. I was going to use basic gray anyway. And it kind of breaks up this black right here. So there's one done. Now, and I'm using dimensionals to put those on. Let's see, I need a happy birthday. grabbing a retired happy birthday because I can't seem to find a current one. I'm, I don't know where my stamps went. I've got celebrating you today, which I know fits on these circles. And I grabbed a happy birthday. Oh, I need eight. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently I need to buy a new happy birthday stamp. <laughs> Because I like, I need some smaller stamps that aren't long. So I'm going to stamp celebrating you. And let's see. This is an old one by the dock. I love the fonts in this card set. We used it uh, on Wednesday when we had our little get together and made guy cards. So... See if it fits in the square. I did square circles, whatever um, shapes you like that work. And I'm just inking in basic gray. You could use pool party or whatever um, that you feel like pops off the page. Let's see. I'm going to try it. Just, I just want to see. What do you think? So you can use what you have whatever greetings you have um, just use your favorites there's two now let's see hey Tracy Oh, thanks for popping in, Tracy. Safe travels. Glad we could entertain you while you're at the airport. Okay, there's that one. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try a lemon lime twist on this. I may hate it. <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. Ooh, I like it. it just brings in a pop of color. All right. There we have it. Any 
questions about this quick technique. Again, I don't know if it has a name. I don't, I just call it a layout, but it is a, a little fun uh, technique where you're just kind of switching your designer series paper around. If you don't have die cuts, you can use a punch. You could just cut squares um, or whatever. So we, in 30 minutes, we got four cards. You can choose your fatter, favorite, favorite patterns. There we go. Got it out. Uh, and make any type of card that you want. So there's our cards for today. Again, I'll finish the insides um, later with a white piece. Uh, let me see. I think, I don't think I finished any of these. Um, so my original set, uh, I used, is it Countryside in? I don't know why that name is escaping me. This is, was the Zoo Crew paper, which is so cute. Um, I just like the black and white. It's mostly black and white with pops of color. So thank you so much, Joan and Linda. Yes, Jenny, record time here. I can be fast, but see, I didn't, we didn't have all the fun choices and um, all that. Oh, thanks for watching from vacation, Deb. I am glad you could join us for part of your morning. Um, I think these are adorable. And I this is probably my favorite image. And, of course, my other one is this little. Um, so, see, I have this set. I can make another quick set. I, I love this little lion and this little alligator. Um, so, I here's another set of cards. And then you have your strips. And, again, if you don't like the little bits like this, use the, the other sides that have the black and white patterns. But they're super cute. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this fun technique to use with your designer series paper. If you need any Stampin' Up! products or you decide to take care of that, um, take advantage of that join special where you get the starter kit so that you can be a discount shopper, you can find all the info at bethroy.stampinup.net. You can click shop now and go to my store and see all the designer series papers that are on sale. Um, you can click that join button and grab that starter kit. Uh, again, I if you need help coming up with $155 worth of stuff, you get a little bit of a bonus this month, um, let me know. I'm happy to help. And then you can immediately start getting discounts on all the things on your wish list. Uh, also, today is the last day to grab the June Paper Pumpkin. So if you want um, the June Paper Pumpkin, make sure you subscribe or reactivate by the end of today. Thank you all for joining me. Um, have a wonderful Saturday. I'm going to go and get ready for my guest. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.